All right. Hello, my YouTube friends. Um, we're continuing the saga of this uh, Fender or the Squire Affinity Stratocaster that um, I've been uh, playing around with. And uh, today I want to get under the pick card and take a look at uh, what the electronics in this guitar look like. And I'll talk a little bit about how the switching and tone controls work on a Fender Stratocaster and things you can do. So first of all, let's take a look under the hood. All right. Let's adjust my position a little bit here. There we go. So first thing you can see, as you look at the pickups, you've got uh, three pickups and they are ceramic magnet pickups. So they have these ceramic bar magnets underneath the base of the pickup and then they have these metal pole pieces going up through the middle. Now those steel pole pieces will guide the magnetic field of these pick of these magnets um, up toward the strings through the pole. So that's just a way to get a more sensitive uh, pickup. And if you look at it, you've got a, a positive and a negative wire coming out of each pickup. And then they're going in this bundle um, uh, up toward this five-way switch here. And then there's a volume control, a tone control for the neck pickup, and a tone control for the middle pickup. And then here there's a, a single capacitor. That, that capacitor is wired such that it works actually for, for both of these tone controls. Um, just kind of a point of, of interest is that when you look in this guitar, it's actually very nicely made. The routes are really clean. The entire cavity is filled with a nice conductive paint, and then there is a ground connection uh, to that uh, conductive paint that goes to all the metal parts. And um, yeah, it's, it's really a, a pretty nice arrangement. And then if you look up here, there's a, a small piece of shielding around the electronics. Now you could improve this and shield this whole thing and, and maybe line that cavity with copper or something, but I'm gonna leave it alone for now. All right, let's get rid of this guitar and let's go to a picture that I drew of the guitar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you basically a wiring diagram that I, I drew a diagram of. It's a little easier to understand and see. Uh, and then I also drew a schematic of this switching system. I'll try and explain it. All right. Okay. Let's zoom in on this a bit. All right, so what you're seeing at the top here is what I would call a wiring diagram. And so this is basically, imagine you're looking at the pick guard from the back and you're seeing the volume control, the tone control for the neck pickup, the tone control for the middle pickup. And then this little symbol here is the capacitor that's used for both tone controls. And then this is the five-way switch. Now, this is actually, uh, uh, an Asian made guitar so it has what they call an import switch and um, it's a little bit different layout than the type of switch you see in a, an American Fender but functionally it's the same it's a double pole three throw switch and the poles are here the two things mark zero and then each of the throws is one two three on this side and then one two three on the other side so it's really uh, two switches in parallel okay let's talk a little bit about how it works so the uh, plus wires from the bridge pickup, the middle pickup, and the neck pickup come in to the one, two, and three poles on one side of the switch. And then uh, the, when you move the switch, you can either choose combinations of one, one and two, two, two and three, or three. And that's really the, the neck position, the neck and middle position, the middle position, the middle and bridge, or the bridge position. And then um, that signal is then sent out to the volume control. And the volume control is really just a voltage divider that um, can basically reduce the, the magnitude, the voltage of the signal coming out of the pickup. Now, over on the other side of the switch is very interesting. Over here, you've got two first order low pass filters. And really, one of them is going to pull three, and that's the, uh, the neck pickup. And one of them is going to pull, to pull two, and that's the middle pickup. And then pole one, which is the bridge pickup, is not connected to a tone control. So that's pretty typical of a Stratocaster. So I would call this um, a wiring diagram. And this is very useful if you want to mess around with rewiring the guitar. Um, and this particular one is just, is just made to look like a, an import Strat. So if you're not really uh, conversant with how uh, electrical schematic works, you, know, you could use this as a way to wire up your Strat if you had an import switch. Now, um, another way to think about... Uh, this kind of a system is with a schematic. And so I'm just going to move us down a little bit. Let's look at the schematic, kind of a functional schematic that I drew. All right. 
here we go. Okay, so um, if you want to think about it electrically, the schematic is actually a little bit easier to understand. So if you look at that, we're looking at a, a double pole, three three throw switch here. And what that is, is it's, uh, uh, it's two switches in parallel. Each of the switches has a pole, and then it has a switching element that can go between three, um, uh, three other poles. And so what happens is, is that one side of the switch here is used to switch the pickup positions. So you can take the neck position, you can take the middle position, or the bridge position. And since this is a five-way switch, you can actually cross between three and two and two and one. So you can actually get neck, neck and middle, middle, middle and bridge, or bridge. So that's a five-position switch. It's not really a five-way switch. It's actually still a three-way switch with two poles. So one side of the switch is handling that switching of the pickups. The signal from the pickups goes you know, through this wire and it goes out to the volume control. So this is a 250 kilo ohm uh, audio pot. And basically it's acting as a voltage divider. And so what you can do is when the pot is all the way up, you get all the voltage coming out of the pickups. And then when you start um, turning the, the potentiometer down, it's a voltage divider and you're just um, dividing the, the, the uh, signal uh, and reducing its magnitude. And so that's, that's basically the, the uh, volume control. Now the other side of this double pole three throw switch is used for switching uh, uh, the tone controls in and out. Now on this one, uh, again, you can get pole three, pole three and two, pole two, pole two and one, or pole one. But you might notice that pole one's not connected to anything. So what you've got over here is um, a pair of first order low pass filters. And you've got a 250 ohm, kilo ohm uh, audio pot, 250 kilo ohm audio pot, and then you've got um, a, a 0 0.022 microfarad capacitor. And that forms a, a really simple first order um, low pass filter. Now, uh, what's interesting about that is that when you're on the, the, the pole three, which in this case is the neck pickup, you're, you're using this side and this side's not functional. When you're in pole two, you're using this side, and this side's not functional. And then when you're on pole one, which is the bridge pickup, there's no tone control connected at all, unless you're on a position one and two together, uh, and then then that tone control would affect um, the combination of the of the bridge and the middle pickup. So a really common modification for a for a, a Stratocaster is to actually just move this lead from pole two to pole one, and that basically makes the tone control active on your bridge pickup, which some people like a lot. And I think I can explain uh, one of the reasons I think that's true uh, on the next piece of paper. So um, I want to talk a little bit um, electrically about how a low pass filter works and some, some of the interesting things about it. So um, this is just uh, pulling out the 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 tone control, a single tone control out of the low pass filter. And basically what happens is you get a voltage in and you get a voltage out and you have this RC network. In this case, the resistance is 250 kilo ohm when it's all the way up. And then the capacitor is 0.022 microfarad. That's the standard values for a Fender guitar. Now there's an important uh, number called the cutoff frequency that you can calculate using that resistance and that capacitance value. And so it's just the, this uh, little equation here, two pi times the resistance times the capacitance uh, the inverse of that uh, gives you the cutoff frequency in hertz. Okay, so uh, if you make a plot of of the 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 uh, signal that comes out of this uh, this network here, this is uh, decibels of output. So you can think of that as the output uh, voltage. And then over here on the horizontal axis, we got frequency. And what you can look at is that um, in this region of frequency, it passes all the signal. And then at a certain, near the cutoff frequency, it starts to turn over and then it reduces. So that cutoff frequency, basically you're adjusting that with the value of the resistor. And since this is a potentiometer, you know, we can turn this value up and down between, uh, you know, very low resistance when the tone control is all the way up to a very higher uh, 250 kilo ohms resistance when the tone control uh, is, is, um, is turned, is rolled all the way off. So what we end up with here is a, a region where we get a band pass and a region where we, we stop. Now, guitar frequency falls between, fundamentals at least, fall between about um, 80 hertz and I think about 1500 hertz uh, or 1200 hertz, something like that. Um, that's up on the you know 22nd fret of the high E string. Now, of course, there are higher frequencies because there's, there's even order overtones uh, uh, 
you know, integer uh, multiples of overtones for um, for this fundamental. So you can get higher frequencies on the guitar, but the fundamental frequencies go from 80 to about 1200. Now, uh, you know, as I said, when you turn the, the tone control up and down, you're basically changing the position of this cutoff frequency. And so you can cut off your high frequencies as you, um, as you uh, engage more of this resistor. All right, there's something really interesting that comes out of that too, because it doesn't just change, uh, it's actually a frequency dependent attenuation. And so let's uh, move back to, the, uh, to look at the next part of this drawing. Let's take a look at this. So if you take a look at how the phase changes with frequency, this is a plot of the, of the phase uh, change um, of the signal that's just coming through as a function of frequency. And so you can see there is a frequency dependent shift in phase, and that happens right near where the cutoff frequency is. And of course you can change the position of the cutoff frequency by turning the tone control up or down. So this is very interesting because what it means is that um, as you start rolling off your tone control, you're changing the position of a, of a frequency dependent region of uh, phase shift. And so you get, what it means is that when you turn your, you roll your tone control down, you get a, a little bit of a, a phase shifting action because of course, um, you know, there's lots of different frequencies involved in the vibration of the string, not just the fundamental. And so you get um, different amounts of attenuation for low frequencies than you do for, or different amounts of phase shift for lower frequencies than you do for higher frequencies. Now, this is kind of interesting because, you know, I've heard it said many times that um, you can get sweeter high notes on an instrument like a Telecaster or a Stratocaster on the bridge pickup if you um, roll the tone slightly off. And I have a feeling that might be because what you're doing is you're uh, adjusting where the cutoff frequency is and where the region of the largest phase shift is, right? See, the region of the largest phase shift is right here in the middle, um, uh, you know, for the area where you're playing. So you can easily, uh, you know, put this to the... Uh, to like 880 hertz or something like that, which is around where, you know, a high A would be up on your E string. So very interesting. Um, there's a nice video uh, by a player named um, Jack Pearson on Marty Schwartz's channel where he um, uh, talks about his ability to get a uh, kind of a, a wah-wah-like tone simply by playing on his bridge pickup and rolling the tone slightly off and then using uh, his fingers uh, and his picking technique in a way that gets a very nice uh, kind of... Um, uh, kind of wah-wah type sound. Really interesting. Great player, Jack Pearson. You should check him out. All right, let's look at the numbers. So if you look at the full, uh, if you have the tone control rolled all the way off, then you're getting 250K of resistance and your cutoff frequency is 28 Hertz. Now that's near the bottom of human hearing range, which is around uh, 20, 20 Hertz. And it's below the lowest tone on a guitar, which is about 80 Hertz. So when you roll your tone control all the way off, um, you're getting a very muffled sound because your entire your entire guitar is in this slope zone, your entire guitar range of frequencies, fundamental frequencies. Now, if you um, if you have your tone control all the way up and you have a very low resistance, I've just put um, 250 ohms in here for 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 EIS, and in that case, the the frequency uh, cutoff is around. Uh, 28,000 hertz, and that's um, up near the top of the human hearing range, which goes from around 20 to say, oh, maybe 20 to 50 kilohertz. All right, now somewhere in the middle, you've got much more interesting things. So this 289 hertz, this is when you've got your um, tone control uh, up about a quarter or so, and this is when you've got your tone control up, say, just over halfway. Um, then you have this really interesting range of about 289 hertz to about 2800 hertz and so this is really the kind of the middle of the guitar neck and getting up into the 12th to 15th frets or so and so it's very you know and up in the, and at 20 at 2800 hertz you're up near the the top range remember the top note on the e string is about uh, 1200 so this is a very uh nice range to have your cutoff frequency be to be adjustable all right so um i hope i've helped you kind of understand how uh, a fender tone control works and uh maybe give you some ideas for your own playing. Now, what I'll probably do in the future is I'm gonna go back into this uh, schematic. And so this is the sort of standard way our Stratocaster is wired. And I have another idea for how to wire it. Well, two things. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and move the lead for the middle pickup tone control 
over to the bridge pickup and see how I like the sound of that. That's the modification that Jack Pearson does to his Squire Affinity Strats that he plays, you know, on stage with with uh, all kinds of big bands like the Allman Brothers and other people. Um, another idea is to do um, a different type of wiring where you run a, a master volume and a master tone control that affects uh, any of the pickups in any position. And then you use the third pot, same pot, um, as a blender, basically to mix the bridge pickup and the neck pickup together. So what this kind of wiring does is it gives you the ability to get the bridge pickup and the neck pickup together on a Stratocaster, kind of similar to the way a Telecaster is when it's in the middle position. And so this is the schematic for that, and um, I will uh, I'll probably go over that in another video when I make that change. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, please give me a thumbs up down below and subscribe. That helps a lot. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you again soon.